This is the last episode of the painting of this guy. It's going to be about the non-metallic metal, OSL on the metal, and the saddle. If you missed this model, I'm sorry, but it was in our last Kickstarter and we don't run a late pledge, so you have to wait at the end of next year. But in the meantime, you can enjoy how I painted it and see my tricks. Also in this video, there is going to be a new segment in the middle of it, so stay tuned because it might be interesting for you. Well, let's start! I'm mixing a base tone for the non-metallic metal of this model, that is what we are going to, to show today. I'm creating a very, very dark color to cover the airbrush part that I did at the beginning of, the, of this model, and you can see it actually in the previous videos. So this dark color, I, I'll cover everything, and I'm creating these purples with the mixes that I usually used in the, in the model. So it's, it's black, a little bit of purple, um, a perilene violet and the blue to create a desaturated violet. We could call it a gray. It's a non-metallic metal, so it, it's grayish and I'm creating texture with this gray. But it is important to be colorful even in your grays and this is why I included a lot of other colors. You can always desaturate stuff with the black and the, and the white because they create gray anyway but it's, it's good to be a little bit saturated in the in the shadows and the mid-tones so right now i'm doing a, a sketching of the lights with the with the brush not not too diluted as you can see i'm marking here and there to give a to give a sense of light and now I'm increasing the lights using the bone khaki that is a, a desaturator. So I'm doing the same mix as before with a little bit more blue because I use the, the warm shadows of the purple and the bone khaki as a, as a light to desaturate. As you may notice, it's the same process over and over from the horse and the, and the skin of this model and I'm using same stuff just in different in different amounts on uh, on the metals more gray more desaturated but very similar and I'm marking new lights now to to increase the the effect Now to make the lights a little bit warm, as you can see, I'm using the Mark Masklands uh, skin tone, the shiny skin tone, to respect the, the overall light that I have in the model. That is a warm, warm light from, from the front. I'm creating a somewhat of a um, dawn situation with this model so everything is in the blues and purples but the final light is a little bit warm as the sun is rising in the case of non-metallic metal if you do a lot of texture like this one it's very good to be very thin in the texturing so you see me using a very thin brush to do little markings and the more noise you can create, the better. I'm leaving also some space between one one plate and the next with a dark line so they are defined but I also create a light right under the black line if you if you look attentively you will see these two lines near each other this line I'm creating below 
is uh, is invented, is, is not sculpted, is created. And this is super important to give a sense of reflection from one plate to the next. And it sells the metallic effect really a lot. To the new run segment. The run segment is a, is a segment in which I'll talk about other things that regards painting, the painting community and so on, while you see me painting the piece in real time. So you can appreciate the mixing, the um, brush strokes and all the minutia while me talking about something else. If you're not interested in me talking, you can just turn my voice off and goodbye. So let's start with this run segment. Some time ago, not, not, not too much, I, I was a judge in a contest and I wanted to talk a little bit about contests and the importance of contest in our, in our work. It was a, an Italian contest in, uh, in the northern Italy, in a very beautiful place actually. It's, it was called the Bel Gioioso Contest. And since I, I looked at things from the inside and many times from the outside, I wanted to give you a little bit of perspective. I think going to contests as painters is super important, super important. I think it's fundamental, it's the best thing you can do actually. And by contest I mean the, the, the big ones, not the local gaming store contests. Those, those contests are extremely good because you can actually see miniature in real life, where they are supposed to be enjoyed. So you can actually see how people really paint. Because you know, when, when you see pictures, it, it's very difficult to, to judge something because you can, you can manipulate the outcome in many ways. And I'm not talking about people cheating with the picture, but I mean, depending on uh, the background of the miniature, the skill of the person that takes pictures, the quality of the camera, all these things will change the outcome on a, on a miniature. Something could look smoother, something could look harsher. Some color choices are very good when you put a black background without distraction, but they are not as good when you see them in a cabinet. So that there are many, many things that a, that a picture cannot show, or even a video actually. And, and I also talk about my own videos. So in, in reality, miniatures, since they are a 3D object, they should be enjoyed in, uh, in person. And to do so, going to a contest is the best thing because you can see the production of all the top artists. You can enjoy them and you can compare yourself to other people and see Oh my god, I thought this was very ugly in, uh, in the pictures when I saw them in a, in a group on Facebook. But now that I see it in person, wow, this is amazing. Now I understand why these people are so good. You know, this kind of stuff. It's, it's super important. And this uh, goes well in pair with another concept, that the important part of a contest is not the result. Result is the... It is made by the judges and judges change all the time. So it, it, it doesn't really matter what you have as a result in a contest. What it matters is that you can see other people work and compare it to you. And you do it by yourself and you can ask feedback to other people. Usually painters are very friendly. So you can ask and they will tell you what they think and so on. So um, it, it, it is good for, uh, for so many reasons and maybe in, an, in another segment, if you're interested, I can talk to you about how the contests work. 
since I've been to most of them, I think. In the meantime, I can tell you um, a couple of things that I think they are important. First of all, what are the important contests to go? The best one is Monte San Savino Show right now, and it is in Italy, the second week of November, and all the best painters go there, so it's really worth to go. Really worth it. The second one is the Scale Model Challenge in uh, Veldhoven in Netherlands, and it's another very good one to, to go. Uh, it, it's a little bit worse than Monte San Savino because of the um, lighting, of the of the cabinets well of the stands but still you you can find amazing painters there it's super huge and super good also for buying figures and to meet the the best miniature producers and the, the last one would be the world model expo that is held every three years in different places that one is huge and enormous. It is a little bit less competitive in uh, in regard of medals, but it's still super good to to check out the best the best stuff. So these are the three to go. Uh, I'm not naming the Golden Demon honestly because I don't think it's a good contest. Maybe we can talk about this in another moment because I don't have time right now as the run segment is almost finished. But no, it's not good because it doesn't um, reward creativity, that contest. It doesn't reward different paint styles as much as it should. And it rewards a paint style that is honestly a little bit old, in my opinion. So yeah, every time I see the Golden Demon or I participate in the Golden Demon, I see rewards being given to stuff that could have been painted 20 years ago so mm, not that one and that's all the second thing is judges are not out to punish people i've been a judge and i see how judges work and they really try to be fair but people are human judges are human so mistakes can be made so this is why you shouldn't take one single contest as a as a thing to judge your career. And that's it. Okay, we are back with the site right now. The process is the same as you as you saw before. I'm recreating the similar mixes. But I will do one thing very different, actually. I will keep the sight way more bright than the rest of the metal. Why is that? The sight is going to be at the top of the model. It's a weapon, so I want to give it attention. I want people to look at it and to be the second focal point after the face of the model. And to achieve this, you need to, to either be more saturated than the rest, but this is impossible because the saturation is already in the face of the model, or you need to have more value, uh, higher value, lighter. And this was my choice. I decided to go lighter so that the viewer would look at the site and feel sharpness. Thanks to this high high value and contrast. So this is what I'm trying to achieve. But mixes are all, all the same. As, you, as always, it's just the, the percentages that change a little bit. It's not the, the colors used. As you can see, I'm creating textures like before. I'm creating new, new textures, new volumes, even where they are not sculpted. And it's super important to paint inside the lines. And this is me <laughs> painting on a, on a different day. 
questo è risalito il bit of a, of a jump While I was painting this piece I also was preparing the Kickstarter campaign so it was super difficult to do both things at the same time so I had to I had to go and stop the model do stuff and then take it back so it's a it's a little bit of a back and forth but it doesn't it doesn't matter too much because you can always match the colors and I made a video on this and if you are not perfect in matching it doesn't matter you will have a little bit of um, of color variance and it's good it's good so for example right now I am creating reddish colors to do the metal around the flame because it needs to be different than the rest so I am creating a new mixes very warm compared to the rest the rest to go to go together with the with the flame so I, I matched in the um, in the helmet to see what I should do on the on the site and as you can see I'm creating reflexes on the on the pole and on the lower side of the of the weapon and on the armband because all these areas are getting influenced by the fiery hair it's very important when you paint an OSL I, I said this already but I repeat it that the OSL area where the, the lights originates needs to be of a higher value mean, meaning brighter than what is illuminated by it otherwise you will have a strange situation in which a light is actually projecting a shadow if it's darker than the rest so take pictures of your stuff in black and white to understand if it's brighter your OSL light and also the parts that are getting illuminated are lighter than what it is around it's super important super important this thing it's the only way to make an OSL work so right now I am I am creating as you see light area in the in the site because the site is getting illuminated so I cannot have a shadow there I need to have something that is brighter than what it is around. Being a different plane, you can play with a with a dark a dark area around the illuminated area, so you can you can influence it and make it look like a light. And I'm doing the same in the inside part of the of the armor because there is going to be a light in the horse in in the same in the same spot so the horse need to reflect light on the knees and on the on the lower leg yeah i'm checking it to understand super important Also, when playing, painting non-metallic metal like this with a reflected light, you have to consider the direction of the light and make the, the brightest spot different than where you would put the zenithal light bright spots. You know, so the brightest spot in the armor should be the one nearest the light source and not the general light one. So this is a mix, a very dark mix of Lizarin, uh, no sorry, Perilene Violet, Purple, Black, a little bit of Blue because it was too, too reddish to, to try and do the, the saddle. I wasn't, wasn't happy with the color of the saddle so I decided to, to change the color into 
a more wine wine color but still using the same colors I had on the palette to avoid a, 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 a wrong a wrong feeling of color so now I'm making it more uh, more reddish and covering the, the previous color that I didn't like and as you can see I'm trying to find my footing around the color and this happens a lot don't worry about it it happens so now I'm adding more orange until I was satisfied with the with the overall color feeling and then even if you are mostly satisfied but it's not perfect yet you can always have a little bit of a glaze on top to to change it you see I'm creating a blood color to create texture and and glazing over the previous one because I wanted it more reddish still more wine still because it didn't look too good for me it didn't read as a um, leather let's say and it was it was too gray so yeah you see I am going over and creating noise and creating glazing don't be afraid of mistakes I, I am one to be very afraid of mistakes let me tell you this is why I'm telling you because I, I'm also telling it to myself I'm afraid of mistakes so I, I think a lot now if you ask me why didn't you paint it brown like leather well I could have painted it full brown yes I could have mm, but it, it would feel strange because the, play, the piece is all dominated by purples it's very purple very purple and blue and the brown it's, it's competing against these other colors at that point so you, you need to you need to insert the colors that they, that you are already using in the piece somewhere else and you put it in in the new part so everything is more coherent so this reddish uh, cold reddish color that is going in the in the leather is to tie it with the orange lights the purple that went into the base leather is was to tie it with the colors of the horse and the grays are always useful to tie things together because everything is similar when it's grayish because there is black and white inside already so those colors will tie things together so now I am increasing the contrast with a, with a level up in brightness while creating a lot of noise but still using similar colors to to match and let me tell you painting this saddle was the most difficult part of the model because I had to find a solution to make it work if it was too blue it would blend too much if it was too red it would be out of place and throw off all the color composition too gray it would look boring as hell uh, too contrasted it will it would make the the metal not look good so saddle was the worst part of the of the miniature for me and you know in these cases you know you did a good job when no one notices it because it's a part that needs to disappear a little because it's not too interesting it doesn't tell too much of a story but if it's wrong it will jump to your eyes instantly so people will say eh but the saddle so this is this is a good um, thermometer to see if you did good in this type of parts it needs to disappear but without being too boring let's say and when you want something to disappear a good idea is to use dark colors instead of light colors creating texture with the light colors to make it look like warm leather 
And as always, the more texture you create, the more you overlap it, the more real it looks. And then you can make it disappear a little bit with some glazing. So it will feel more natural. And it's not, it's not art. It's just a matter of repeating the texture a lot. And now I'm glazing it, as I said, with a wine color to make it disappear more. And also it pushes for more contrast because you lower some part while leaving other more um, plain as they were, so they jump more to the eyes. I'm also adding blue to tie it more with the horse, as I was explaining before. I painted off cam the mane of the horse and some little details, but nothing, nothing much. So this is the end of this series, I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't watch the previous videos, go back in the channel and you can find them. Please give a subscribe and a like and see you for the next video. Bye!